Good evening, I'm Kimilia and welcome to Kini News. I hope you're all feeling recharged after the Raya holidays. However, if you happen to be a certain minister, our next news item might leave you feeling a bit depleted. The AMNO Youth Chief dismissed claims that boycott campaigns are tanking the economy, blaming stupid ministers instead. AMNO Youth Chief Dr. Muhammad Akmal Saleh has denied allegations that the boycott campaigns he led are worsening the economy. Instead, he pointed fingers at ministers like Housing and Local Government Minister Nga Kor Ming, blaming their incompetence for the country's economic downturn. Akmal's statement on Facebook stressed that during Najib Abdul Razak's tenure, similar boycotts didn't hinder economic growth. Calling Nga stupid and unwise, Akmal said the economy is deteriorating because there are ministers like him. Yesterday, Nga expressed concerns on X about the impact of boycotts on local workers, cautioning against falling into the trap of instigators. He emphasized the need for collective efforts to develop the national economy. Attached to his statement was a screenshot of a Chinese media report highlighting the hardships faced by local workers allegedly affected by business boycotts. Akmal initiated boycotts against KK Mart over the Allah socks issue and against cosmetics entrepreneur Alif Shukri's products following his controversial Hari Raya video during Ramadan. Last month, images of socks bearing the word Allah at KK Mart's Bandar Sunway outlet went viral on social media, prompting outrage. A courtroom drama is taking shape in Kuala Lumpur that could rival any spy thriller. Israeli assassin Shalom Avitan faced charges today for his alleged arsenal of six pistols and 158 bullets. The Israeli assassin apprehended last month with firearms and ammunition faced charges at the Kuala Lumpur Sessions Court today. Shalom Avitan, 37, entered a plea of not guilty to possessing six pistols and 158 live bullets between 6.46 p.m. on March 26 and 6 p.m. on March 28, 2024, in a hotel room on Jalan Ampang, Kuala Lumpur. He said he understood the charges and pleaded not guilty after the court interpreter read the charges before Judge Tasnim Abu Bakar. The charges were brought under Section 7, Bracket 1 of the Firearms, Increased Penalties Act 1971 and Section 8, Bracket A of the Arms Act 1960. If convicted, Avitan faces the possibility of the death penalty or life imprisonment with a minimum of six strokes of the whip. On March 12, Malaysian police arrested Avitan at a hotel in Jalan Ampang, Kuala Lumpur and seized six firearms and a large number of bullets. Avitan is believed to have entered Malaysia through the United Arab Emirates on March 12 using a French passport. On April 8, a married couple suspected of supplying the guns to the Israeli men were charged in the Klang Sessions Court for firearms offences. Anwar Ibrahim condemned Israel in the wake of an airstrike that tragically claimed the lives of Hamas leader Sheikh Ismail Haniyeh's three sons and two grandchildren on Idil Fitri's first day. This is what the Prime Minister had to say. Anwar Ibrahim launched a scathing rebuke against Israel after an airstrike claimed the lives of Hamas leader Sheikh Ismail Haniyeh's three sons and two grandchildren on Idul Fitri's first day. In a statement yesterday evening, the Prime Minister expressed his condolences, stating he had contacted Ismail to offer support for his family and Palestine. We, we, we feel the pain. And um, although I'm trying my level best, it's, it's still too small to what you have personally endured and uh, but on this case about the loss of your grandchildren ch three children and i i just uh, beg for your ma uh, patience and uh, we feel your pain and pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will be your partners in Jannah, inshallah. Anwar added that the loss of innocent lives, especially children, under tragic circumstances is unacceptable. 
Anwar condemned Israel for what he termed as atrocious genocide against Palestinians, asserting that the attack undermines hopes for a ceasefire. He also said Israel's blatant disregard for international law and humanitarian principles extinguishes any prospect for peace. Anwar urged the international community to take decisive action against Israel and stressed the urgency of bringing peace to Palestinians who have endured suffering for 75 years. Al Jazeera TV reported that Haniyeh's sons, Hazem, Amir and Muhammad, were killed in Gaza's al Shati camp. Hamas media added that two of Haniyeh's grandchildren were also killed and one was injured. In a twist of fate, Malacca police didn't hesitate to pull over one of their own after a police vehicle collided with a motorcyclist on Jalan Gangsa Kesang, Durian Tunggal, during Shawal's early hours. Viewer discretion is advised. The following scenes may be disturbing. Malacca police apprehended the driver of the police vehicle involved in a collision with a motorcyclist on Jalan Gangsa Kesang, Durian Tunggal, Malacca, during the early hours of the first day of Shawal. State Police Chief Zainul Sama revealed that the 37-year-old corporal from the Durian Tunggal Police Station was detained by the Traffic Investigation and Enforcement Division of the Alor Gajah District Police Headquarters at approximately 9 a.m. today. The corporal's arrest is pivotal to investigations into the accident, which tragically claimed the life of an 18-year-old motorcyclist. Zaino said at the time of the incident, the suspect was driving the vehicle alone before other members of the force arrived at the scene. He added that the suspect joined the force in 2006 and has been stationed at Alur Gaja IPD since November 2021. During the incident, he was conducting patrols to curb illegal racing based on public complaints. Zaino disclosed that the police have received six reports concerning the accident, along with statements from three witnesses and the victim's family. Furthermore, a preliminary urine screening test was conducted on the involved police officer, confirming the absence of drug abuse. The case is being investigated under Section 41, Bracket 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987 for dangerous driving leading to death. Zainul affirmed the police's commitment to conducting transparent and professional investigations. Bersatus got no time for turncoats. The party's info chief dropped the bombshell that the seven elected reps who jumped ship to Team Anwar are out of luck and out of their seats. The membership of the seven Bursatu elected representatives who pledged support for Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim is now void, claimed the party's information chief. Razali Idris stated that the seven individuals should immediately vacate their seats without waiting for dismissal letters. According to Razali, the membership of the seven turncoat representatives ended after the Registrar of Societies approved Bersatu's proposed amendments to the party's constitution. Speaking to Berita Harian, Razali said the six MPs and one assembly person should not wait for an official letter from Bersatu and should resign and vacate their seats if they are gentlemen. The Bersatu constitutional amendment was prompted by the defections of MPs Zuka Ferry Hanapi, Said Abu Hussein Hafiz Said Abdul Fasal, Iskandar Zuka Nain Abdul Khalid, Muhammad Azizi Abu Naim, Zahari Kachik, and Suhaili Abdul Rahman. In early March, Slat Klang Assembly Person Abdul Rashid Asari voiced support for Slangor Munshi Basar Amiruddin Shari, citing the well being of his constituents. The amendment to Article 10 of Bersatu's constitution stipulates that any elected representative who defects from the party will automatically cease to be a member. In doing so, the defectors will also trigger the anti-hopping law per Article 49-A of the federal constitution, leading to the vacation of their seats. Lim Lip Eng, the Kapong MP, is turning up the heat on Pujajaya, demanding a thorough review of its deal with Spanko. A DAP lawmaker is calling on Putrajaya to thoroughly reassess its agreement with Spanko Sendirian Berhad amidst ongoing court proceedings against company chairperson Robert Tan Hua Chun. Kapong MP Lim Lip Eng has raised concerns on how the government can ensure the contract with Spanko is fulfilled. This is following allegations that Tan deceived the finance ministry into awarding the company a 15-year, 3 billion ringgit contract for supplying, maintaining and managing official government vehicles. Lim cited a recent parliamentary reply from the finance ministry confirming the agreement's validity but expressed dissatisfaction with the response. 
Dem said it is ironic that a company accused of attempting to defraud the government holds a multi-billion ringgit contract. He pressed for details on the concession agreement's value, its expiration date, and whether the cabinet approved the contract award to Spanko. Established in 1988, Spanko is Malaysia's leading independent fleet management provider. It secured a 25-year concession agreement with the government in 1993. On April 3rd, Tan pleaded not guilty to charges of cheating related to the government's vehicle fleet procurement and management. Join our Muhiba Story Photo and Essay Campaign. Share your cross-cultural friendships to celebrate Malaysia's diversity. Submit a photo with friends or family from different ethnic or religious backgrounds, along with a 100-word story, to our story at MalaysiaKini.com by April 30th. Selected stories will be featured on Malaysia Kini and contributors will receive a free one-month subscription. Let's build a better Malaysia together. That is all from me today. Kini TV wishes all our viewers a joyous and blessed Hari Raya Idul Fitri. If you're going to Balik Kampong, please do so safely. I'm Kimilia. Thanks for watching.